look what else this person was selling. This is the kind of thing that I go through and it was probably boring for you, but I do this over and over again in my head. What's up, I'm Aiden, I'm at my self build and I'm gonna talk about air tightness. Uh, I feel like Roger Bisbee with my whiteboard, but I'm not gonna moan, I'm not gonna moan. These are the kind of things that preoccupy me when I don't particularly want to do something else. I then spend forever in a day researching a particular subject so I know the ins and outs of it like a duck's know. I do like like figuring stuff out and knowing everything about it but then it holds you back from doing other stuff so I, it's, in a way it's, it's me procrastinating is stupid okay what, what color should we use i'm just gonna show up maybe, maybe black yes black 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 like the clouds of death that follow me into the forest of doom <laughs> airtime is they measure it in cubic meters per hour per meter squared of the envelope of your building. When, when you say envelope of your building, what, what are they talking about? Well, that's what I asked as well, and it, it, it's not necessarily straightforward. What, what is the envelope of the building? It's basically anything, any bit that's basically outside that's in contact with the world, um, or the inside of that outside bit, if you understand. So the envelope of your house didn't include loft, it would be, the ceiling all the way across this outside wall the ground and that outside wall there and obviously if you've got a detached house you go either side so basically you, you count up the square meterage of everything so i need that full gable as well as this gable as well as the floor area as well as this pitch bit and that pitch bit so that, that's the opposite of the little house that I drew. I'm essentially just doing the loft. So if you didn't, if you just had a normal house and you didn't include the loft, then your air barrier would have to be your ceiling. Now, for this, I'm doing the opposites because I'm just doing the roof. So I need to work out the meter squareage of this. Um, so I know this is, say, 2.6 meters high. So I'll just work out on one angle, maybe the other angle as well. Uh, so I'll cut that in half and then I'll leave it there. Yeah, so that'll be 2.6 uh, times. So 5.6 times 10 to the opposite. Right, so 2.6 times 5.6 is equal to 14.56. And uh, the floor area, so that's, that's 5.6 again. Um, I can look at the opposite sides. So 5.6 times 5.6 is equal to 14.16. And then the pitch area, you can say the opposite again. And that's about 4.5 meters. So 4.5 meters and then 2 of them times 2 is equal to 77.4. So add them together, it gives you 140.12 meters squared. So that's the envelope of my building. So let's just call it 140 meters squared. So again, the calculation for building regs, which hasn't changed since I think like 2006 or something like that um, for air tightness. This is just for new build, obviously. Um, so the maximum you can have is 10 meter cubes of air per hour per meter squareage of your building. And they measure that at 50 pascals. That's pressure, that's effectively wind blowing at your house at 30 kilometers an hour, roughly 20 miles per hour. Now I know the meter square ridge, which is 140. That's obviously an hour, an hour's an hour. I can have 1400 <laughs> cubic meters of air escape per hour. But how do you how do you even work that out? Because of, I haven't got one of them fan machines on the door or anything. So, what what does it mean in real terms? Like, tell me. I've went on the internet. I found this uh, this bloke. He's done a little bit of a article. A certified passive house consultant. He's got a first class honours degree and a bachelor of technology, as well as a masters in English science. So you think he's quite, he should be quite intelligent, yeah? Air tightness, the facts. On average, we spend up to 90% of our time indoors. It makes sense to make this environment as stable and comfortable as possible, free from any draft and cold spots. So apparently from um, the air leaks, you, you 
you lose like a massive amount of heat. And even though you might beef up your insulation, if you've got loads of air leaks, it's not really gonna make a difference. That's the reason why it's such a big thing. Um, right, so he built a passive house and that's how he started all this off. And he said, basically, uh, if he built it just the building regulations, so a leakage rate, a leakage rate of 10 cubic meters an hour per meter squared, the equivalent size hole in the building, once everything had been sealed up, would be approximately 440 millimeters times 440 millimeters. And then he says, whereas what was achieved on this passive house was a leakage area uh, that is 10 times smaller at just 44 millimeters times 44 millimeters. 440 times 440, okay? And then he's saying that 10 times smaller is 44 millimeters times 44 millimeters. Now, if you didn't question that, you probably think that that was right, but it's not. This 44 times 44 is 100 times smaller. So he's a moron, isn't he? He's an absolute moron. Can I use that information to work something out for this? I've got 140 square meters and obviously I can't because he doesn't even know that 44 times 44 millimeters is 100 times smaller than 440 times 440 millimeters. Just going back to the, the little picture, right? He's got the ATM and the ATM he's saying is 0.44 meters squared. Now it would make sense if it was basically one meter, one meter times 440 millimeters would give you 0.44 meters squared. And you can imagine a, an ATM machine being a meter tall and that. And then he says next to it that a credit card is 0.044 meters squared. It's not, it's, it's smaller than that. It's actually, it's probably more like 0 0.044. It's probably like 48, I think it is. So he's just an absolute moron. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's blagging something and I can't believe that he's a certified passive house person. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. So basically we can't rely on this. He's a complete moron. So then I had to look for something else. We found the Passive House Trust organization. So you'd, you'd think they'd be a bit more reliable, wouldn't they? So they give the air tightness requirements for Passive House certification uh, in, in monetary terms. So I'll put that up now. So to be Passive House compliant per five meters squared, you would have a hole that's the size of a 5p piece. And then for normal building regulations, the maximum allowed is the equivalent to a 20 piece piece per meter squared. If, if I was to look at it, I could go, right, okay, for every meter squared of my envelope, I can have a 20, 20 p piece size hole. I can understand that to a certain respect, but I want to know how big 140 of them are. So 140 20p pieces, how big is that hole? See, why, why can't I leave that and just accept that I can only have a 20p piece hole and I just do what I need to do just, just to do that? But I, I want to know how big it is. Here's a 20p. You know that it's not completely round, is it? So, if I was to times up that area, what am I actually timesing up? Like, what is the area of the 20p? I know the diameter of this is 21.4 millimeters. So let's just say, for argument's sake, we're gonna take off the little edges there. And we'll just call it 21, okay, millimeters. That's the diameter. Now, what we need to know is the area of that and then I can use that to then times by 140 and then I know what size hole I can have. Right, so what we're gonna do. Uh, so I'm gonna area of the circle is 20 meters that's pi. Pi times r, which is radius squared, equals the area. So I'm gonna say right, so pi, we're gonna use that. So I'm gonna go down to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 4, 6, 3, which is so 6 meters squared. Okay, that's the size of that. And what's really, let's just do 5 feet, uh, 5 feet, 18 meters. So pi squared is gonna be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 
最快。Whole envelope, I can't have a hole that's bigger than 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters. These regs, okay. Passive house, uh, you can have 0.6 meters cubed air change per hour per meter squared. Divide that by five, it's going to give us 28, and then. Uh, if we go 28 times this number, 0 0.0071251167. That. And then uh, obviously that's meters squared. Square root of that is going to basically give us an 84 times 84 millimeter hole. Got it? Now, obviously, I don't want to skirt on the edge of. 220 by 220, so I need to get somewhere in between this and this. Now, if you was to do, say, half this, if you was a moron, you go, well, I want 110 by 110, but that's not half the size, is it? What you really want to aim for is probably five cubic meters, and you'd be all right with, like, natural ventilation and trickle vents and everything like that. If you go below that, anywhere say below three cubic meters, you need proper ventilation systems, like I'm gonna have in the house over there, in the barn, in the house. So in an ideal world, I'd have probably have something like 15 by 15, or 150 times 150 millimeter hole. But I, I can't make sure that that's exactly what I'm gonna have. So what, what do you do about that? I don't know. So obviously I've just gone round in circles. But it's not proportionate. It's, you know that it's almost like one of them exponential things. So, um, so what, what, what you then probably want to do, you want to do a new calculation. Okay, so now I need to calculate the airflow rate through an orifice. You like that word, orifice, orifice. So the formula for that is here. Okay, so I'm going to use black for this one, black. Black, black, black on the fly, trapped in the bottom of shadows. <laughs> we, we're not, we're not. That obviously, once I looked at that formula, I went, Aiden, just bloody stop, mate. Stop. Get on with things and start bloody taping everything and and just get on with it. So, I'm going to quickly run you round and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do about what. Okay, so you'll notice everything's taped up. It's like we're in a bloody spaceship. This is in between rafters insulation, and then they're the rafters there. I've taped over it, so this is effectively uh, my vapor barrier as well as an airtight barrier. Invariably, they're kind of the same thing. Um, it depends, obviously, what you get and what you do. You can get all special tapes. I've just used the standard foil tape for this and then up the top I'll quickly flip you over I've just used the foil tape all the way around and so I've taped everything the reason why I've had to do it all the way up there is because I'm having plug sockets up there for my infrared ceiling panels heating panels uh, I've used it to obviously tape everything else out I've taped it to the floor as well I've taped let's have a look around the windows that so the special tapes are like very very expensive 
Like I don't, I don't know how they get away with charging so much. And so I thought, right, okay, I'm not having that. So I quickly jumped on and I thought, right, okay, use your brain. What what else is there out there that's going to be like that? So the, these tapes that they get, like there's one by Dewpoint is some kind of like acrylic tape or something. I was like, right, okay, acrylic. Well, what, what does that mean? And it, it said it's flexible and everything. And I was like, well, what other tapes are a bit flexible? And I thought, right, electrical insulation tape. So I looked up that and then I got right PVC tape, 100 mil wide. I can use that instead because surely that's going to give me some level of air tightness. It'd be sticky enough. And then I pulled up the internet and then I found this tape and I'll show it on screen now and look what else this person was selling. So he's got rolls and rolls of this PVC tape sitting about and he's offloading so it's a bit weird what, what do you reckon he used the pvc tape for i don't know i don't know so that's what i'm going to use i'm going to use a bit of that i've also got some sealant uh, it's non low modulus which basically means that it's going to have better elasticity uh, and it'll obviously adjust for a little bit of movement i will need that for around the bottom here now you see my floorboards, there's a gap between that and the edge here. Even though I've got the 25 mil insulation that needs to go over the top, but it's still gonna be a gap down there. So I've done this over here, this side. So I've used the stuff that I had left over from the shed. I've cut a 45 off it and then I've stuck it to the floor here. And then I'm gonna use the low modular sealant with my sealant gun and I'm gonna go all the way down there, all the way on the edge, and then I'll go 25 mil over the top. I'll use the PVC tape, I'll use the aluminium foil tape. And hopefully what I do will give me a certain level of air tightness, but I have no idea how much air tightness I'm gonna have, and whether it's gonna be too much. But the good thing is with these Veluxes, that's your triple vent. So hopefully that will be enough. What I'll do is uh, I'll see what happens. This is effectively part one. If you're still watching, well done. But this is the kind of thing that I go through and it was probably boring for you, but I do this over and over again in my head. Sometimes it's good because I'll realize things and uh, like the penny drops but it takes like a tremendous amount of processing. It's like Bitcoin mining in my head. <laughs> sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's a complete waste of bloody time. Now, so yeah, we'll see whether all of this effort, what I'm doing, because I can't imagine anyone doing that in terms of tradesmen. They're not gonna bother. Uh, unless you unless you get building an actual passive house and you get someone that's actually qualified to build a passive house and they know what they're doing they've done it before and they know what it takes but if you're getting the individual trades in they're not going to be caring about putting holes in things but i do so we'll see whether this works obviously not using conventional expensive tape and all that jazz uh this is effectively a double vapor barrier because I'm gonna have one inside as well so I should be all right so hopefully all these little tiny holes won't add up to more than 220 by 220 and if you want to find out whether that's actually the case and what happened in the end then you might as well subscribe and then you'll see what happens later on or if you're watching this and I've already done it then I'll have the test results and part two will come up now anyway Thanks for watching. Push the bell notification. Please do subscribe. I'll see you later.